Hi everyone and welcome to the opening talk of Prabhuji video lecture commentaries. In this section of the Institute we are going to have talks about segments from lectures given by Prabhuji. Now we may be concentrating on a sentence or a section out of the video lecture and that is in order to allow us to go deeper into his spoken words. And I use the word words and not teaching on purpose. And that is because teaching can indicate dogmas. And if there is something Prabhuji doesn't encourage anyone is to use his words as teaching on dogmas. Dogmas, he says, are actually point of views that come out of an authoritative place. Now, um, point of views are not necessarily the truth, no matter how authoritative they may be. I would say, according to my understanding, uh, points of views are definitely very much affected by the conditioning of the mind, of the giver of the view. And when we are in search of the absolute truth, um, that's not necessarily what we need, no matter how authoritative they may be. And that is also the reason why spiritual authorities were not given uh, to anyone due to the exact understanding of the human nature or human mind. Spiritual authorities, enlightened master, um, throughout the generation were self-evident. They emerged out of their own experience, out of the absolute. And it wasn't out of someone uh, appointing them or... Um, or someone's opinion about them. It, but one thing for sure, it was undeniable. And as such, this lecture is a perfect opening to this section of the Institute in order to align us in the right direction when listening to Prabhuji or reading his written words. Now, I would like to add something here. Um, Prabhuji's lecture have so much in them Besides the wisdom and the knowledge, I think something very interesting that happens is that besides of all what he gives in that aspect, there's a certain type of association that happens with Prabhuji even through his, um, his uh, video lectures. And sometimes he puts a spotlight on um, some unasked questions that we had uh, uh, puts um, uh, an indication or a, a spotlight on on some subject that we never never even thought in relation to a certain subject and the wisdom and the knowledge and that it sort of all comes together and you sort of like go on some kind of a, of a journey when you listen to Prabhuji's lectures um, and personally, I would say that you probably never listen to Prabhuji's lectures twice because something does happen to you when you listen. So the next time you listen, you are not exactly the same person who listened to uh, the first time. So you will pick up other things. You will be aware of things that you totally before weren't aware of. And I think that is something that is absolutely great and I encourage everyone to really go and listen to Prabhuji's lectures, whether via audio or video. Um, there is so much that can be gained from it. Now, so for our first talk, we will listen to a short section of a lecture Prabhuji gave as a reply to a question about the retroprogressive practice. The name of the lecture is No Sadhana, No Dogmas, No Do and Don'ts. And as I said, it's a very befitting uh, lecture uh, for the opening of this section. Now, I do recommend that you will listen to the lecture in full before or after, if you haven't. Um, but at the moment, we are going to see the question that Prabhuji was asked with the beginning of his reply.
Your teachings confuse me. I can't define them. They do not offer techniques or methods, neither a certain belief or practice. Could you offer some clarity regarding your path? These teachings don't offer a dogma, not a mythology. Not beliefs, not a long list of do and don't do. In different occasions, I have said that I don't preach belief or faith, that I am a preacher of doubt. Because only through doubt you can really open to a revelation. Beliefs keep you feeling that you know something about truth without knowing nothing. The believer live with a feeling that he knows something. It's like a way to hide the ignorance. Your teachings confuse me. I can't define them. They do not offer techniques or methods. Yes, I don't offer any technique, any method. And the reason is because you come here or you come to me after a method, after dogmas, after certain mythology or belief, because you come to me out of fear. So after we listen to this short segment, we will concentrate on two subjects in the answer. One is the sentence, I don't preach belief, I preach doubt. And then when Prabhuji said that we search out of fear. And so it happened that I had a chance to speak to Prabhuji about this sentence. I don't preach belief, I preach doubt. And his reply was actually very interesting. And he said to me, do you know why? Do you know why I don't preach belief but doubt? Because belief and faith are not the same thing. Belief is of the mind, and I don't want a large group of convinced people after me. I don't want convinced people that can be convinced differently according to their argument. It was important for Prabhuji that people will understand that to be convinced, it's like to be programmed. And then you can be deprogrammed. Um, according to the, to the argument, you can be convinced and then you can be deconvinced. And it all happens um, according to the ar arguments. It all depends on what's going on in your egoic phenomenon. Um, that will allow you to believe or disbelieve, or to believe one day and not to believe another day. But faith, he says, faith requires trust. I want people to be people of doubt, he says, because doubt is existential. A open a doubt about my lectures, be a teacher of your guru's doubt, was his words. And then he also added that 
when you ask people what is a flower, a sun, or, or breath, sorry, they will give you an answer and they will be sure that they know what they are talking about. But wise people, if you ask them the same question, what is a breath, you will never find an answer. You will only find doubt. And he said, who I am is a question of doubt, is a question that comes out from doubt. In the retroprogressive search, we don't go to the unknown, because what is unknown today can be known tomorrow or next week. The doubt, Prabhuji explains, belongs to the unknowable. You can only be it, but you can never know it. Now, what we are really getting here from Prabhuji is an attitude towards the retroprogressive search, not something to believe in, that if someone will come with, uh, to us with a different argument that suits better our egoic phenomenon, we will switch beliefs. Um, if we really after the truth, if knowing who we really are um, is really what we want, then we need to doubt. But it means that we need to doubt everything and anything. And the start should be with me, the seeker. And that requires faith, trust, as Prabhuji mentioned earlier. Belief is of the mind and therefore can be overturned. But not only that, we can go around the periphery and ask all kinds of questions that are, at the start, seems to be part of the spiritual quest, but they actually keep us going in circles um, in the periphery. Um, and they prevent us from asking the most important question, and that is me, the seeker. Who am I? Faith, like doubt, is existential. Who I really am is one of the first questions that one should ask himself on that path. Now, because we cannot know it, it is not now, not in the future, we can only be it. It's really a process of removing identification, removing belief, concept, and so on, that we have gathered and collected with us and that we identify with. And, and instead of adding all these things to ourselves, it's an issue of letting go of all these things. Now, the question was asked, was seemed to be asked from someone who is asking about tangible things like sadhana, which is the, the spiritual practice, seeking something secure in some sort of rules and regulations to follow, dogmas to believe in and identify. But from the question, I think we can understand that it comes from a point of thinking that if I will have those things, I will be able to find out who I am. If I will add these things to myself, things will be okay. I will have the tools to know the unknowable. And what Prabhuji is saying is no, nothing to add to yourself. He's destroying this notion that something from the known can be a vessel to know the unknowable. And that is because if there is something like that, it means that it will become more important than the truth itself. The tool to reach the truth will become more important than the truth itself, which means I can manipulate the truth. And therefore, absolutely not, it defeat the purpose. We cannot have a tool or something that will allow us to reach the, tru the truth with it. And as we heard directly from Prabhuji, all the retroprogressive search is not about knowing, it's about being. And until we realize that we are already what we are searching for, one of the ways to go about getting closer to the unknowable is by understanding what it isn't, what it's not. And not because it will reveal the unknowable, but because it will leave us with nothing. It will leave us with basically emptiness. It will open a space in us for something from the truth to be revealed. Now, this is very much um, on the lines of 
neti neti of jnana yoga, the concept of not this, not that. It is like sorting and examining all the things that we believe ourselves to be, all the things that we are attached to. And in this case, all the things that we think that if we will have, like a sadhana, a do and don't, set of rules, teachings, dogmas, all these things, if we will be given those, we will be able to reach a, and find out what we are looking for. And Prabhuji from the beginning is demolishing these notions. What he is telling us in this lecture is, don't believe me, check for yourself, doubt even me. Doubt everything, destroys all the beliefs that you grew up on, all the things that you think that you know, leave nothing standing and check for yourself. And most of all, doubt yourself. Why are you searching? What are you looking for? Are you sure that the truth or who you really are, wh what you really are, is that what you're looking for? Who is the one who search? Maybe you will find out that you, what you are looking for is something totally different. And it may be not so comfortable or not so easy to confront to start with, but the one thing it will do for sure, it will put you in reality. It will put you exactly where you are, not in your hopes and dreams, not in your fantasies, not in how we want to see ourselves to be. And on the way to the truth, only truth can help us, nothing else. And seeing these things as they are is actually the only way. Because you really need to know where you are in order to know where you want to go. And you can only know that from the point of where you really are. are. So all these questions will um, situate you, if nothing else, at least in your current reality. That from there you can know where to advance to. Now, on top of that, Prabhuji is also mentioning the issue of fear in the spiritual search. And it is also very relevant to what we just said, because fear can accompany you in different stages of the search. But here Prabhuji is mentioning fear from a very specific point. And what he is telling us is something to look at within ourselves the retro-progressive search out of fear. And as per Prabhuji explained, men look around and see that everything changes in this world. All the time, nothing stays the same, nothing is permanent. It may exist for longer or shorter periods of time, but absolutely nothing stays the same. And this is what is called in Hinduism, maya or illusion. Now, the truth is unchangeable. And because of these changes, the question arises, is there anything that doesn't change? If, as we say, that everything that changes cannot be the absolute truth, then is there something that doesn't change? Is there anything that is the absolute truth? Now, when we spoke to Prabhuji about this, he said the search can go in two directions. One is out of fear, one may be looking for protection from those changes, from everything that, uh, that moves and changes. And, and that's where it takes you into religion. It leads you to religion, which gives you a sense of security. That's the aspect uh, of belief that we mentioned before, the feeling that we know without really knowing. Just to expand on that a little, I would say that we are given all the answers about God, life. We are told what to do, what not to do. Um, and, or, and, and also that if we will follow all the, these things, we will go to the good pay, place, so to speak, which gives us a notion that we know God and what he wants. You call it God, existence, truth, no matter what. But one thing it does, it puts us in a place without that we feel that we know without really knowing. Because we have all kinds of answers, and if I have an answer, it means I know. But because of the same fear, we don't try to check the answers that we have. We don't question all of these things. And we just believe, repeat, 
and which seems to us like we know and there's um there's actually a lecture of Prabhuji where he calls it um, a dress up ignorance that this is one direction religion that the fear takes us to now just to be clear there's nothing wrong with rules and regulations with the um, uh, practices with the uh, spiritual and religious practices that is not the issue they can be a great tool in the retro progressive path but we have to remember and to make sure that they are done with the right understanding with the right awareness and not in order just to feel that everything is okay and in order to get something from it it doesn't make me closer to the truth it actually separates me even more because if I think that I know, uh, it can be much more dangerous to me than not knowing. It can actually keep me stuck in a state where I don't know, I feel I know, because I practice and I feel good, so I don't check it. I get into a routine that makes me seem like I am on the right path. And not only that, that there is a result and an outcome that I know that's going to come out uh, out of it. So I sort of know where I'm going. Not knowing is a much, much more open door because I can ask questions, I can investigate, I have where to advance to. Nothing limits me. I have nothing to prevent me from finding out basically anything that I want to find out because I'm not um, situated in a place where I am not investigating, not checking, I'm just believing. And that's also where faith very much comes in, into this, this, um, this thing. The second direction Prabhuji uh, was mentioning was that out of the same doubt, out of the same fear of seeing that everything changes, a real seeker will ask if there is something that doesn't change. I need to find that something that doesn't change. That is the approach of not escaping the fear. Now, when Prabhuji is talking about to be a preacher of doubt, it's not about asking the question. It's to encourage the doubt. And he said, don't escape the fear. Don't escape the doubt. Search for the one thing that doesn't change. And as we mentioned at the beginning, who you really are, you can only be. You will never know it, but you can only be it. And again, what we are getting here from Prabhuji is a direction and not a passive one at that. Go and find out for yourself. Make it your experience and find out firsthand all that Prabhuji is saying. And you will not have to believe, you will know. And that's what Prabhuji is directing you. Be your own experiment and ask the question investigate into this but you whatever happens whatever will be revealed to you whatever answer you might get it will be you will know it will never an issue of belief and the amazing thing about it is that no matter what you see where you are on the path it is never really a wrong place to be in if you are able to look at it, to check it, be aware of it, and look at, see where you are at the moment, to observe actively, then you are more in reality than just believing in something that you don't even going to investigate. And for that matter, Prabhuji is not talking out of intellectual analysis of the retro-progressive path or out of a theory or an opinion he developed. He is talking out of seeing, out of residing in the truth, out of his experience. He said the other day, I'm not a preacher of truth, but a sower of doubt. To encourage people to live in the question, to reside in the question, to become a question. So I think that that leaves us with a lot of things to think of and investigate into. Thank you very much for joining me. Enjoy Prabhuji.